Neolithic Europe is the period when Neolithic technology was present in Europe, roughly between 7000 BCE, the approximate time of the first farming societies in Greece, and c. 1700 BCE, the beginning of the Bronze Age in Northwest Europe. The Neolithic overlaps the Mesolithic and Bronze Age periods in Europe as cultural changes moved from the southeast to northwest at about 1 km per year. This is called Neolithic expansion. The duration of the Neolithic varies from place to place, its end marked by the introduction of bronze implements. In southeast Europe, it is approximately 4,000 years, i.e., 7,000 BCE to 3,000 BCE, while in northwest Europe, it is just under 3,000 years. C. 4500 BCE to 1700 BCE Topic Basic cultural characteristics Regardless of specific chronology many European Neolithic groups share basic characteristics such as living in small scale family based communities subsisting on domesticated plants and animals supplemented with the collection of wild plant foods and with hunting and producing handmade pottery that is pottery made without the potter's wheel Polished stone axes lie at the heart of the Neolithic new stone culture enabling forest clearance for agriculture and production of wood for dwellings as well as fuel there are also many differences with some Neolithic communities in southeastern Europe living in heavily fortified settlements of 3000 to 4000 people e.g. Sesclo in Greece whereas Neolithic groups in Britain were small possibly 50 to 100 people and highly mobile cattle herders the details of the origin chronology social organization subsistence practices and ideology of the peoples of Neolithic Europe are obtained from archaeology, and not historical records, since these people left none. Since the 1970s, population genetics has provided independent data on the population history of Neolithic Europe, including migration events and genetic relationships with peoples in South Asia. A further independent tool, linguistics, has contributed hypothetical reconstructions of early European languages and family trees with estimates of dating of splits, in particular theories on the relationship between speakers of Indo European languages and Neolithic peoples. Some archaeologists believe that the expansion of Neolithic peoples from Southwest Asia into Europe, marking the eclipse of Mesolithic culture, coincided with the introduction of Indo-European speakers, whereas other archaeologists and many linguists believe the Indo-European languages were introduced from the Pontic Caspian steppe during the succeeding Bronze Age. Archaeology Archaeologists believe that food-producing societies first emerged in the Levantine region of Southwest Asia at the close of the last glacial period around 12,000 BCE, and developed into a number of regionally distinctive cultures by the 8th millennium BCE. Remains of food-producing societies in the Aegean have been carbon dated to around 6500 BCE at Gnosis, Franchi Cave, and a number of mainland sites in Thessaly. Neolithic groups appear soon afterwards in the Balkans and South Central Europe. The Neolithic cultures of southeastern Europe, the Balkans and the Aegean, show some continuity with groups in Southwest Asia and Anatolia, e.g. Current evidence suggests that Neolithic material culture was introduced to Europe via Western Anatolia, and that similarities in cultures of North Africa and the Pontic steppes are due to diffusion out of Europe. All Neolithic sites in Europe contain ceramics, and contain the plants and animals domesticated in Southwest Asia, einkorn, emmer, barley, lentils, pigs, goats, sheep, and cattle. Genetic data suggest that no independent domestication of animals took place in Neolithic Europe, and that all domesticated animals were originally domesticated in Southwest Asia. The only domesticate not from Southwest Asia was broomcorn millet, domesticated in East Asia. The earliest evidence of cheese making dates to 5500 BCE in Kujawi, Poland. Archaeologists seem to agree that the culture of the early Neolithic is relatively homogeneous, compared both to the late Mesolithic and the later Neolithic. The diffusion across Europe, from the Aegean to Britain, took about 2500 years, 6500 BCE to 4000 BCE. The Baltic region was penetrated a bit later, around 3500 BCE, and there was also a delay in settling the Pannonian Plain. In general, colonization shows a saltatory pattern, as the Neolithic advanced from one patch of fertile alluvial soil to another, bypassing mountainous areas. 
Analysis of radiocarbon dates show clearly that Mesolithic and Neolithic populations lived side by side for as much as a millennium in many parts of Europe, especially in the Iberian Peninsula and along the Atlantic coast. With some exceptions, population levels rose rapidly at the beginning of the Neolithic until they reached the carrying capacity. This was followed by a population crash of enormous magnitude. After 5000 BCE, with levels remaining low during the next 1,500 years. Populations began to rise after 3500 BCE, with further dips and rises occurring between 3000 and 2500 BCE but varying in date between regions. A study of 12 European regions found most experienced boom and bust patterns and suggested an endogenous, not climatic cause. In 2018, an 8,000-year-old ceramic figurine portraying the head of the Mother Goddess was found near Uzanovo, Vidin province in Bulgaria, which pushes back the Neolithic Revolution to 7th millennium BC. <laughs> Genetics Genetic studies since the 2010s have identified the genetic contribution of Neolithic farmers to modern European populations providing quantitative results relevant to the long-standing replacement model versus demic diffusion dispute in archaeology. The component due to Mesolithic European hunter-gatherers and Neolithic farmers expanding from the Near East were called Western hunter-gatherers and Early European farmers EEF, also First European farmers FEF, respectively, in the seminal 2014 study which first identified the contribution of three main components to modern European lineages the third being, ancient North Eurasians, associated with the later Indo-European expansion. The EEF component was identified based on the genome of a woman buried c. 7,000 years ago in a linear pottery culture grave in Stuttgart, Germany. The 2014 study found evidence for miscegenation between WHG and EEF throughout Europe, with the largest contribution of EEF in Mediterranean Europe especially in Sardinia, Sicily, Malta and among Ashkenazi Jews, and the largest contribution of WHG in Northern Europe and among Basque people. Since 2014, further studies have refined the picture of interbreeding between EEF and WHG. In a 2017 analysis of 180 ancient DNA datasets of the Chalcolithic and Neolithic periods from Hungary, Germany and Spain, evidence was found of a prolonged period of interbreeding. Admixture took place regionally, from local hunter-gatherer populations, so that populations from the three regions Germany, Iberia and Hungary were genetically distinguishable at all stages of the Neolithic period, with a gradually increasing ratio of WHG ancestry of farming populations over time. This suggests that after the initial expansion of early farmers, there were no further long-range migrations substantial enough to homogenize the farming population, and that farming and hunter-gatherer populations existed side by side for many centuries, with ongoing gradual admixture throughout the 5th to 4th millennia BC rather than a single admixture event on initial contact. Admixture rates varied geographically. In the late Neolithic, WHG ancestry in farmers in Hungary was at around 10%, in Germany around 25%, and in Iberia as high as 50%. <laughs> Topic: Language. There is no direct evidence of the languages spoken in the Neolithic. Some proponents of paleolinguistics attempt to extend the methods of historical linguistics to the Stone Age, but this has little academic support. Criticizing scenarios which envision for the Neolithic only a small number of language families spread over huge areas of Europe as in modern times, Donald Ring has argued on general principles of language geography as concerns tribal pre-state societies, and the scant remains of apparently indigenous non-Indo-European languages attested in ancient inscriptions, that Neolithic Europe must have been a place of great linguistic diversity, with many language families with no recoverable linguistic links to each other, much like Western North America prior to European colonization. Discussion of hypothetical languages spoken in the European Neolithic is divided into two topics, Indo-European languages and pre-Indo-European languages. 
Early Indo-European languages are usually assumed to have reached Danubian and maybe Central Europe in the Chalcolithic or Early Bronze Age, e.g. with the Corded Ware or Beaker cultures see also Kurgan hypothesis for related discussions. The Anatolian hypothesis postulates arrival of Indo-European languages with the Early Neolithic. Old European hydronymy is taken by Hans Krahe to be the oldest reflection of the early presence of Indo-European in Europe. Theories of pre-Indo-European languages in Europe are built on scant evidence. The Basque language is the best candidate for a descendant of such a language, but since Basque is a language isolate, there is no comparative evidence to build upon. Theo Venman nevertheless postulates a Vasconic family, which he supposes had co-existed with an Atlantic or Semititic, i.e., parasemitic group. Another candidate is a Tyrrhenian family which would have given rise to Etruscan and Raic in the Iron Age, and possibly also Aegean languages such as Minoan or Pelasgian in the Bronze Age. In the north, a similar scenario to Indo-European is thought to have occurred with Uralic languages expanding in from the east. In particular, while the Sami languages of the indigenous Sami people belong in the Uralic family, they show considerable substrate influence, thought to represent one or more extinct original languages. The Sami are estimated to have adopted a Uralic language less than 2,500 years ago. Some traces of indigenous languages of the Baltic area have been suspected in the Finnic languages as well, but these are much more modest. There are early loanwords from unidentified non-IE languages in other Uralic languages of Europe as well. Topic. List of cultures and sites Mesolithic lipensky vir culture 10th to 7th millennia Megalithic culture 8th to 2nd millennia Early Neolithic Franchi Cave 20th to 3rd millennium Greece First European Neolithic site. Sesclo, seventh millennium, Greece. Starsevo Chris culture, Starsevo I, Koros, Chris, Central Balkans, seventh to fifth millennia. Dutsti culture, sixth millennium. Middle Neolithic. La Almagra pottery culture, Andalusia, sixth to fifth millennium. Vinca culture, sixth to third millennia. Linear ceramic culture, sixth to fifth millennia. Circular ditches Cardium pottery culture Mediterranean coast, 7th to 4th millennia Pit comb ware culture, a.k.a. Comb ceramic culture Northeast Europe, 6th to 3rd millennia Kukuteni Tripulian culture Moldova, Ukraine, Romania, c. 5200 to 3500 BC Erdebol culture Denmark, 5th to 3rd millennia Cortilid culture Switzerland, 4th millennium Hembury culture, Britain, fifth to fourth millennia. Windmill Hill culture, Britain, third millennium. Pfyn culture, Switzerland, fourth millennium. Globular amphora culture, Central Europe, fourth to third millennia. Horgan culture, Switzerland, fourth to third millennia. Enneolithic, Chalcolithic. Langyell culture, fifth millennium. A culture in Central Europe produced monumental arrangements of circular ditches between 4800 BCE and 4600 BCE. Varna culture, 5th millennium. Funnelbeaker culture, 4th millennium. Baden culture, Central Europe, 4th to 3rd millennia. Las Malares culture, Almeria, Spain, 4th to 2nd millennia. Corded ware culture, aka battle axe or single grave culture, Northern Europe, 3rd millennium. Gatto culture, third millennium, early Bronze Age, in Italian. Beaker culture, third to second millennia, early Bronze Age. Stonehenge, Scara Bray. Topic: Megalithic. Some Neolithic cultures listed above are known for constructing megaliths. These occur primarily on the Atlantic coast of Europe, but there are also megaliths on western Mediterranean islands. C. 5000 BCE, constructions in Portugal Evra. Emergence of the Atlantic Neolithic period, the age of agriculture along the fertile shores of Europe C. 4800 BCE, constructions in Brittany and Poitou Bougon. C. 
4000 BCE, constructions in Brittany, Carnac, Portugal, Lisbon, Spain, Galicia and Andalusia, France, Central and Southern Corsica, England, Wales, Northern Ireland, Banbridge and elsewhere. C. 3700 BCE, constructions in Ireland, Caromore and elsewhere, and Spain, Dolmen of Menga, Antiquira Dolmen's site, Malaga. C. 3600 BCE, constructions in England, Mombury Rings and God Manchester, and Malta, Gantija and Nidra temples. C. 3500 BCE, constructions in Spain, Dolmen of Vieira, Antiquira Dolmen's site, Malaga, and Guadiana, Ireland, Southwest, France, Arles and the North, Northwest and Central Italy, Piedmont, Valle d'Aosta, Liguria and Tuscany, Mediterranean Islands, Sardinia, Sicily, Malta, and elsewhere in the Mediterranean, Belgium, Northeast, and Germany, Central and Southwest. C. 3400 BCE, constructions in Ireland, Newgrange, Netherlands, Northeast, Germany, Northern and Central, Sweden and Denmark. C. 3200 BCE, constructions in Malta, Hagar Qim and Tarxan. C. 3000 BCE, constructions in France, Sommer, Dordogne, Languedoc, Biscay, and the Mediterranean coast, Spain, Las Malheres, Belgium, Ardennes, and Orkney, as well as the first henges, circular earthworks in Britain. C. 2900 BCE, constructions in Spain, Dolos of El Romeral, Antiquira Dolmen's site, Malaga. C. 2800 BCE, climax of the megalithic funnel beaker culture in Denmark, and the construction of the Henge at Stonehenge. See also References Sources Further reading Topic. External links Early farmers from across Europe directly descended from Neolithic Aegeans, Hoffmanova et al., 2016 The genetic structure of the world's first farmers, Lazaridis et al., 2016 Massive migration from the steppe as a source for Indo-European languages in Europe, Hawk et al., 2015 Population Genomics of Bronze Age Eurasia, Allentoft et al., 2015 8,000 Years of Natural Selection in Europe, Matheson et al., 2015 The Horse, the Wheel and Language, How Bronze Age Riders from the Eurasian Steppes Shaped the Modern World. David W. Anthony, 2007 General Table of Neolithic Sites in Europe Mario Alanay, et al., Paleolithic Continuity Theory of Indo-European Origins Culture, Gouv. Fr., Life Along the Danube 6,500 Years Ago